Yeah. There's like 15 times a day where I'm like, Jesus, look at this goof. You know, like, what the fuck's this guy doing? From the blanket fort we're calling a studio, it's the Sub Pop Podcast. <laughs> hey, hi, I'm your host, Alyssa Atkins, with your other host, Arwen oh. Nix. That's me. Hi. Uh, this is episode two of season one of the Sub Pop Podcast, and the basic idea of the show is that we're going to bring you stories of artists of Sub Pop past and present, and a whole bevy of other people that we're going to talk to about everything from time travel to politics to karaoke and for some reason, porn quite a bit. For, um, some reason. for some reason, I ask a lot of people about porn. <laughs> if you want to know more about how we're putting this together and why, that is explained at length in episode one, which you should also go back and listen to because it's pretty good. You should just for fun yeah. and for information. Yeah, if you found this episode and you're liking it so far, maybe <laughs> you're really going to like episode one. You know, another part of episode one was a snippet of my conversation with Noel Hero and Jessica Zambri from Mass Gothic. It's quite good. Yeah, Alyssa has been a little obsessed with this moment. <laughs> oh, I say, uh, you must be joking me off. Yeah. <laughs> are you joking? Like, if somebody's like... Are you like, joking me off right it's now? It's like her version of, are you kidding me? Is, are you joking me off? <laughs> it's, that one's pretty fun to say. Okay, so we're going to be hearing more from both Noel and Jessica in a minute. Also this episode, we're going to hear from Sarah Moody. She's the general manager of Hardly Art. And throughout this season, we're going to be talking to so many artists that are on Hardly Art. And so we wanted to introduce you to Sarah first and a little bit about that label and how Sub Pop's sibling label got started before we dive into that deep pool of talent that is Hardly <laughs> Art. Oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds good. <laughs> We're also, another thing uh, that you have to look forward to at the end of this episode is a quick story from Ben Bridwell of Band of Horses talking about getting thrown in the clink over a holiday weekend because <laughs> he's, uh, he's a little bit of a troublemaker. But first, Mass Gothic. Uh, Noel and Jessica were here a, a few weeks ago, maybe a couple months ago now. They were recently here for a marketing meeting, and um, I convinced them to come down to this little blanket fort murder studio for a lap-lined room. <laughs> and they were very trusting and sweet, and no harm came of them. And in fact, we had a great conversation, and they gave me really good advice, tips and advice, and then actual real good life advice at the end. We have one dynamic, and it's like, <laughs> Can you recommend one thing to me? It can be anything. <laughs> hmm. Life advice, restaurant, food. Hmm. Hmm. In the past year or two, I have been like taking your advice, Noel, which is like chill out and wear your pajamas like all day for, you know, sometimes. Like one day every week or so. Like just don't be, get out of your pajamas. Just be, just be. And don't feel bad about it. Yeah, and that's really hard to do. And I think especially if you're, yeah, the thing is, is that like I had to accept that I wasn't going to stay in bed for you know, the entire month and not write or do anything. It's like, once you know, like, all right, that's not kind of... It's one day. It's one day. Like, you don't have to... Losing all my time to do everything that I need to do, and vacation is for the week, and it's bullshit. <laughs> well, I mean, some of the most strict religious groups have been, like, imposing that same exact thing, but, like, in a way that sounds a lot less lazy and oafy in the way that, than the way that we're saying right now, but, like, if that makes you feel any better, I mean... Yeah. Yeah, Day of rest. All the religious people out day there. Day of rest. That's uh, yeah. I mean, it doesn't do it for me, but no, oh, yeah. I'm just pajama day. But pajama day. <laughs> yeah. And it's just to wrap up. That's your thing. See nicely into mine. Because <laughs> so I was gonna say this is whatever. Don't be afraid to ask very difficult questions about yourself and say that you're wrong sometimes about shit. And like, don't be afraid of therapy. Mm. Mm, you know. Take responsibility Ooh. for your own bullshit. That's like my that's my favorite one right now. 
Right. And it wow. made my pajama days a hell of a lot more rewarding as well. In those m- moments of clarity, sometimes you're like, oh man, I have all these thoughts or these new ideas you wouldn't have had if you just kept Easy. kept your head down and powered through. And <laughs> It's true. Like yeah. it, you'll actually maybe even get there faster yeah. if you yeah. take a break every now and then. Yeah. What yeah. question would you want us to ask other bands? What would you want to know from other bands when we get the opportunity to talk to them? be interesting to be asked once in a while like do you like what you're doing are you happy with what you're doing if so when did you become happy with what you're doing because I'd like to see the reactions of some bands to that question because if you asked me that question like three years ago or four years ago I would have like stumbled my way through it just like trying not to answer it yeah that's great I mean it's it's super relatable too because go to therapy guys oh jeez yeah <laughs> <laughs> So I made a mistake How many hours can I spend Silently in one room Memorizing wallpaper We don't complain When I say what you're doing, I mean generally, like in, if we're talking to bands, in music and whatever. It's a good whatever. question to ask, like yourself, period, end of story, of bands, which I think is good because a lot of times people will be like, oh shit, I didn't even think about that, which is probably a red alert. But then in general, too, like, it's if, kind you're of not, totally if you're never, I guess if you're never asking that question, then like you might find yourself doing things you don't want to do on a regular basis, which, you know, you might discover, like, Five, ten years later than you would have if you had asked yourself that. Are you happy with what you guys are doing right now? Are you both happy? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I just, I just set you up to ask me that. So, uh. <laughs> <laughs> and thank you, I'm gonna ask you. Yeah, no, I, I, I found myself really, really cornered and, and stuck, and I like, there were outside factors that put me there, but I totally allowed myself to settle into that corner and then I put myself even further in the corner like telling myself that everything's fine and I'm I'm I got it under control I'm doing this is fine whatever oh this is the right thing to do it's you want to be nice to everyone around you you got to do right by so and so and so and so and then I was just like it just kind of like blew up in my face at some point a couple of years ago and I was like oh <laughs> this is not I'm not doing anything that I you know, I'm not doing this stuff for myself. I wouldn't say it's a nice question to ask bands, <laughs> but it's, yeah, it'd be interesting. But finding your way out of that got you to a totally different place yeah. where you can feel yeah. like and like, satisfied. Like the, you know, if people don't like shit that I'm making now, I'm like, that's okay, because I chose everything. I just, I, mm. I'm doing it, you know, it's all, it's all on me. So that's all right. The process could still be like just as high and low. It's just like a, if if the end all be all is like sort of like I want to be doing this regardless if it's making me a crazy or not. You still want to do it. That that makes the really spiky high low moments a little less daunting. Jessica are on tour. Mass Gothic's album, Mass Gothic, is out and available now at such fine retailers as the Mega Mart, the, the Sub, Sub Pop, Pop Mega Mart. Mart. Yeah. Um, speaking of the Sub Pop Mega Mart, now a word from our sponsor, the Sub Pop Mega Mart. Right. Should we do something like Sunday, 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 monster truck style? Yes, try it. Try it with Sub Pop. Okay. 
uh, sub pop, sub pop, sub pop. And then in the background it goes, Mega Mart. <laughs> okay. Oh, and that, yeah. What's a, I don't even know what a crop top is. <laughs> it's basically like if you took the t-shirt that you're wearing and you cut oh. it above the belly button. Right, it's like a half shirt for women. It's a cropped top for anyone. It's non-gender specific. I, this first summer season of Beverly Hills 90210, Steve Sanders was wearing so many crop tops and it was amazing. See, to me, the way I grew up, you'd call that a half shirt. Okay. Maybe that's a Northwest thing. But half shirt doesn't rhyme with sub pop. So. Do you, but you don't actually sell crop tops. No, but um, you can easily convert one of our other offerings into a cropped top. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Okay, go for it. Um, need a crop top or a flip flop? Hop over to the one stop shop to cop all things sub pop. You don't have either of those things. <laughs> no, we don't. <laughs> So as promised, our next interview is a discussion I had with the uh, lovely and stoic Sarah Moody. Uh, <laughs> it's who true. It's she is. Stoic. Yeah. She's, she's totally stoic and totally lovely. I really adore that lady. And she was kind enough to spare an hour of her time to come into the murder closet and chat with me about how the label got started. I had heard rumors from, well, actually not even rumors. It had been talked about in morning meetings that they Sub Pop was thinking about starting a little label. And by this, I thought they meant that it would be kind of part of the Sub Pop bubble. People in Sub Pop would run it, and it would just be in addition to their Sub Pop jobs. And what ended up happening was there was a day in late 2006, I think it was, when I got a call from Megan Jasper. I was sitting at my desk, I remember, and she asks me, hey, I'm, I'm sitting here in my office with a couple folks do you want to do you want to swing by and I said okay and I'm pretty sure at this point this is maybe the first time Megan has ever called me <laughs> maybe second and so in my mind I'm like oh god what have I done horribly right or wrong and had no idea what on earth I was about to be congratulated on or reprimanded for and so <laughs> I step into Megan's office and uh, it turns out that they were going to start this label thing and they wanted to know if I wanted to run it and I said uh, well, <clears throat> okay, so you want me to keep doing publicity stuff, but also train whoever you're hiring to do this label, right? And they're like, no, we want you to run the label. And I was like, okay, so I'll be doing my publicity stuff, and then I'll be running this label. And they're like, no, we want you to stop doing publicity stuff and just do this label. And it sounds cool now, but at the time I was... Like, well, wait a minute, I've only been at Sub Pop for this long, and this has been what I've wanted to do for so long, and you're wanting me to now leave what was formerly my dream job and take a leap into the great unknown void that is the new label. <laughs> How much power did you have to actually run the label when it first got started? Well, when it first got started, there was nothing to run because <laughs> it didn't have a name, it didn't have a logo, it didn't have a website, and it didn't have a roster outside of our first band, which was Arthur and You. <laughs> Sun coming down Leaves on the ground And so, so when I say leap into the void, that's, that's what I mean. Is so just you didn't even, you had a band before you guys even had a name for the label? Mm -hmm. Well, we had a band we were interested in working with. Wow. We had to name the label before we could offer them a record deal on sure. said label. Yeah. And so it was it was part of a larger process. But that was the first band that we signed to the label, which we finally named, which was Hardly Art. And why did you name it Hardly Art? Have you ever tried to name anything? Yes. <laughs> it's so hard. <laughs> it sucks. I've had to it's name different worst. radio shows, and it's, it is the fucking worst. Going back to In the Mood. Yes. This was also a problem. And yeah. so... 
no, it was, it was very much a process because it's the sort of thing where you think you'll have a thousand ideas and then someone finally asks you, hey, we're going to start this thing. What do you want to call it? And then your mind goes blank. It's like it, when you ask someone, hey, what's the name of that song or what's the name of that one word? And then once your brain gears get turning, it just, there's, it's gone. yeah, it's gone. But thankfully, one day, Tony had the idea of grabbing a lyric from a thermal song, who at the time Sub Pop was still working with, and said, hey, why don't we just call it Hardly Art? It comes from the song by the Thermals. That's super great. And we were all like, hmm, Hardly Art. That's maybe one of the least terrible names that's been thrown out as of yet. Hardly Art, Hardly Starving, Hardly Art, Hardly Garbage, Hardly Art, Hardly... Is there something that Hardly Art has yet to do that you hope for? We haven't gone platinum. We also, we keep trying to do a caravan tour, which I think is slowly starting to happen in the sense where, you know, we have more bands that will tour together or... So a caravan tour is what exactly? Caravan tour would be if we got three bands all on the same route playing the same shows together. But I think doing a caravan tour would just kind of drive home that point of, hey, we have this roster of bands that are incredible live and now you get to see three of them at once. How cool is that? (laughs) (laughs) what is something that is part of your job that people don't understand like when you say like oh i run a record label it is a quote-unquote cool job. There's the perception that it's just kind of a good times party time all the time, <laughs> which it is a good time, but it's not to say that it isn't stressful or that it isn't, you know, a lot of concerted effort on the behalf of the label. I think a lot of times people don't really understand what it is a record label even does anymore or why they're needed or necessary or, you know, what have you. I think that's going to be the unanswered question for this entire podcast, because <laughs> we're definitely not going to explain what it is. We like to keep some mystery yeah. to uh, what we do <laughs> around here. That was Sarah Moody, General Manager of Hardly Art. Thanks for talking with us, Sarah, and thanks for letting us take over a closet in your office, in the Hardly Art office. Yeah, the, make- <laughs> the murder closet, burlap lined room, blanket fort that we keep talking about is actually a room that's part of Hardly Art's offices that we just took over. I think we're like Pacific Heights squatting in yeah. Hardly Art's offices right now. Yeah, and we just come down here, make a bunch of noise and commotion. Creep up on them. Yeah, yeah. so thanks for that, Sarah. Also, Sarah and Jason, uh, if you're listening to this, there's chips in the other room. And they might be a little stale, but they're yours for the taking. Even though they say, podcast only, don't touch. (laughs) (laughs) So who are we hearing from next week on the Sub Pop Podcast episode three? I'm so proud. Um, If we can make it to episode three, we will be hearing from... Tony Kuehl, Tony K. Kewell. <laughs> Kewell. I don't know how to say it. <laughs> no, I like Tony Cool better. <laughs> Can we just call him Tony Cool? Yeah. Okay, Tony Cool. <laughs> <laughs> he works in A&R yes. and does so much stuff here at Sub Pop. And he explained to me how Sub Pop put out their first, as everyone likes to describe it, intentional comedy yes. album. And we're also going to talk to Ben Bridwell of Band of Horses, who I spoke to for like over an hour it was a a favor kind of a friend of a friend thing that he agreed to talk to us late at night while he was right while his wife was like expecting their fourth child and it was like 11 o'clock at night and he's in the middle of making a new record but he still spared some time for me which was pretty nice that was nice of him how did you call in that friend of a friend favor (laughs) by the way well Alyssa (laughs) Full disclosure, audience, I am dating Jen T. Champion of S, and Jen used to be in Chris's Weird with Ben. They're old friends. They met in Tucson in the late 90s and were 
basically they were street kids together for a while and before Chris is weird started and and this story that you're about to hear from Ben which didn't make it into our final conversation is actually because Jen gave me some tips she fed me some questions to ask Ben including this one about a uh, late 90s debacle <laughs> Yeah, Matt and I were um, sleeping rough, as they call it, just sleeping out of doors. And, you know, he, he had this great guitar that, that he sold to his boss in Olympia at Burrito Heaven, I believe. And we were broke as could be, you know, stealing candy bars to eat sometimes, buying a pack of gum with our food stamps to get 75 cents back just to get, you know, maybe a couple, uh, like a Jack in the Box burger or something to eat. So when his boss gave him, I think it was something like, it was astronomical, it was, it was like 600 bucks or something, you know, and, and we didn't have that kind of money. I mean, even two paychecks didn't equal that. So when he got that money, we'd been eyeing this guitar that we passed by every day in this, this music shop in the, in the uh, Pike Place Market and kind of lusted after it, you know, this kind of Dobro resonator guitar. Jen and the boss guy came up from Olympia and we were like, we're gonna spend that money on like a hotel room. We're gonna sleep inside, like in a bed. I mean, it's gonna be awesome. This was a big deal for us. Um, I mean, we'd been planning all week for this this weekend. And so we get the money, we go to the store, and the guy that ran the, the shop was a total dick to us, you know? And sure, we looked, we looked like bums and kind of were. And it's not like we're running around shoplifting everywhere. I, I, I made it sound like that, like maybe to grab a bite when we're starving or something, but no, we weren't bad people at all. Um, we were saving. We were trying to work jobs to save up money to get an apartment. So, the fact that this guy treated us like, like, you know, so poorly, really offended me, man. I thought to get his ass back, I'm gonna steal a kazoo, a harmonica that I didn't even realize they're in different keys. I'm just like, oh, you got here's a harmonica. We can play every song that exists, and a jaw harp, you know, like the bonga dong dong thing. <laughs> so it was, it was only like, I mean, nothing that's over five bucks a piece. So when the alarm went off on this harmonica or whatever, I actually thought there was like a fire going or like a fire alarm got pulled. So I'd stopped dead in my tracks. I didn't think to run or anything. And the guy asked me, he's like, you know, can you come back inside? I was like, oh, of course. Like, wow, something crazy out here, right? And like, and he pressed charges. He pressed charges. I went to a King County jail and it was Easter weekend. So all the court dates were all pushed back. I ended up sleeping in King County for like, I think it was like three nights or something. Missed that whole weekend, didn't get to go to the hotel. You know, it was such a stupid stupid thing to be arrested for too. Like once that, you know, my case was, all these backed up cases, you know, they're running us through the mill. Uh, they're like, get the hell out of here, don't do anything stupid for a while and you'll be fine. I was like, okay. And as I'm walking down Broadway, I have no idea how to find Matt either. Like we're separated now, they have no idea where I am. Happenstance would have it, that as I'm walking down Broadway, Matt's walking on the parallel street north, and we cross the intersection at the same time, just on different streets, and see each other. Like within, seriously, within like an hour of getting released from King County. I was like, dang, what the hell has happened, you know? It was a wild time. We're going to get more from Ben Bridwell, more up-to-date and storytelling from Ben Bridwell in episode three. So tune in for that next week. And maybe some more dirt from Jen about Ben. We'll definitely be hearing from Jen this season for sure. The chemistry we have is incredible. (laughs) On today's episode, you heard music from Mud Honey, of course. Mass Gothic, the the Thermals. Arthur and you, Chastity Belt, Shannon and the Clams. Taco Cat, Band of Horses, The Satisfaction. The Baptist Generals and Shabazz Palaces. And if you want to find those songs, we have a playlist up at our website. You can find a link to that at subpop.fm. Yeah, that's subpop.fm. And while you're there, you'll find links to subscribe please do and you'll also find um, past episodes yes you'll find episode one and if you happen to be listening in iTunes we would really appreciate a rating it's not intuitive but it sure helps us out a lot it's true it's not intuitive <laughs> so much so <laughs> that some of the sub pop staff couldn't figure it we're out we're still working, we're working on, on that on it, okay? uh, thank you very much to Noel and Jessica thanks to Sarah yeah, Moody and thank thanks you. to Ben who again you're going to be hearing more from next episode big thank yous to the sub pop brass Chris Jacobs, Megan Jasper, Jonathan Poneman. You're all sweethearts. You really are. <sighs> Fuck. <laughs> <laughs>
All right. Let's do this. Let's see how that sounds. Should we test that? Yeah. 